Hi, I'm Ashley. Welcome to part three of the Mushroom Growing Overview series, where we just look in overview at how to grow mushrooms. So no particular specific details, but enough to kind of get you acquainted with all the kind of things you're going to have to do. So part one, we looked at where you get mushrooms from, like the spores and um, spawn. Part two, we looked at what do you grow mushrooms on, like what substrates to use. And part three, now we're going to look at what you grow mushrooms in. So there's a step between, um, you have to take the mushroom spores or spawn and you have to inoculate the substrate, the thing that the mushrooms grow on. And what you have to do, you have to sterilise the substrate first for indoor growing. Otherwise you'll get all kinds of contaminants growing instead of the things you want to grow. So I'm going to leave that step out and talk, we'll talk about that later. You need a pressure cooker essentially, or so there's some other ways to do it. But just imagine that we've, uh, we've been able to sterilise our substrate when, when I talk about this. So a typical thing you would use in order to put your substrate in for growing, and this is during the kind of expansion stage, so there's two primary stages. We're going to grow our mushrooms out in the expansion stage, in jars, in the dark, and then we're going to move them to a fruiting chamber where they're then allowed to fruit. So for the expansion stage, we're just allowing the mycelium to colonise the substrate enough so it's fully colonised, then we'll move it to the fruiting chamber. So to give you some examples, here are some wood dowels inoculated I believe with a glowing glow-in-the-dark mushroom mycelium and uh, they've fully colonized this, it's actually very old, they've dried out by now and this is done in a kilner jar. Glass is very good because you can sterilize it and you can heat it to high temperatures and it's reusable and cleanable and it's very good. But what you'll notice on the top here, this lid is made of PTFE and inside there is a filter disc and I've cut a hole in the top of the lid and you can see the filter disc. So to show you what that looks like underneath, so that is a plastic filter disc. And the reason you use PTFE is because this will this is autoclavable. What this means is you can put this in the pressure cooker and it won't melt into a blob of plastic, which is what happens sometimes. It's happened to me before when I didn't really know what was autoclavable and what wasn't. I ordered these from Fungo Perfecti, which is Paul Stamets' company in America. There isn't really any way you can get them in the UK. But don't worry, there are alternatives. So a kind of poor person's, or poor man's, I don't know that phrase really, the kind of, the ghetto way of doing it is to, um, you can use this, which is called Tyvek. Now this is used um, for packaging, and uh, it's essentially a very, it's a paper that's made of a plastic and it also has very fine holes in it so it lets air through but it won't let bacteria through. You can then take a lid, like this is a Le Parfait um, jar lid, a Le Parfait jar, and I've cut a hole in top of the jar lid and then I've put the, um, the Tyvek underneath and you can order Tyvek on eBay. So you can um, then want to screw this on. I've got then a hole for air exchange, but no contaminants can get into the jar. An even kind of more ghetto way you can do it is, if you use a kilner jar, and this one's been used a couple of times, so it's gone rusty, and on, over the top of that, I've just um, stuck a bit of surgical tape. So that also has kind of fine um, holes in it. Some other people, they'll stick in uh, like a kind of rock wool, or they'll stick in even cotton wool, and these things are quite effective. In what's called the, um, the PF Tech, if you look this up, um, when people make vermiculite brown rice flour cakes, they often put a layer of vermiculite, of dry vermiculite around the top, and that also acts as a barrier. Because the whole point is you want to prevent contamination of your substrate so that your mycelium can fully colonize the substrate before transferring it to the fruiting chamber. Another thing you'll see if you're growing wood, wood substrates is you typically grow them in, in bags. And these are gusseted spawn bags. So what these look like is like this. And you can again sterilize them. These are autoclavable. 
And uh, what you see at the top here, these lines, these are permeable membranes to allow air exchange because mushrooms are like us, they breed oxygen. They need air exchange and they need good fresh air exchange to get rapid colonization of your substrate. So, okay, you've got the substrate in a jar and that's how it's gonna grow. So where are you gonna put this? You can just put this in an airing cupboard or something like that. Typically what I do is create a box. So you have a look down here. Now what this is, is just a black box um, with a lid on. I've put some perlite in the bottom and some cardboard. That was mainly to separate out the, um, the heating element from, so that these mushrooms weren't directly on the heating element. And this is a heating element for a vivarium. This one's made of like some kind of carbon fiber or something and it's 20 watts. So you can use something like this, and these typically come with controllers that you use, that you buy for a vivarium, which I've stuck on the side here of my um, box. Yeah, I think Habistat, it's like a common make. And um, I can set then the temperature that I want. So here's like another example where there's a bigger, a much bigger mat with a temperature controller. If you remember, if you look on some of my other YouTube videos, I'm actually working on a temperature controller myself. Actually, just let me grab it for you. Just observe the cat for one second. Okay, so I thought it was important to show you this, worthwhile to do it. So this was a graphene heating element that I made using a graphene paint, a conductive graphene paint made by Robert Murray Smith, look him up on YouTube. And um, I, bu I built a um, controller for it um, to actually heat it to the correct temperature. This is a work in progress, it's not complete yet, but you could do something like that, of course. Another thing that people use to heat a, uh, a box is I've seen some people using these and what these are is aquarium heaters of course they're supposed to be um, for heating water so sometimes people immerse it in water and then the water heats the, the box that's good if you need humidity as well so you could also just chuck this in the um, air and cover or something like that so that would be during the incubation stage. You'd leave it in a warm place and the, until the mycelium has completely colonized the jar, like we see in this case. It's, this is over-colonized, this is old, and I should have used this before. Now, once you've done that, you need to transfer it to a fruiting chamber to change the conditions, and most importantly, increase the humidity so that the mushrooms can then fruit. So to give you an example, this was a block which was a grown in a sp gusted spawn bag like this and this is a, a little reishi that was um had grown out of it now i didn't have a at the time i didn't have a decent fruiting container and this actually dried out that's why it still still exists but i have grown uh, quite a lot of mushrooms and what i will typically use now is something like this which is a propagator and uh I'll use a propagator and put a heating mat underneath it and then put a layer of perlite in the bottom, put a load of water in the perlite, not like drowning it, but cover the perlite with water in the sense that the perlite's covered in water, not like a big layer of water, you know, just so it's wet. And then heat that and that will create a humid atmosphere in here that's the correct temperature, which means then your mushrooms then are exposed to fresh air through these exchange holes on the top, they've got the correct humidity and the correct temperature, and importantly, they also have light. So when we're doing our incubation for the for the just the substrate, this doesn't need light because this is the stuff that's supposed to be underground when the mycelium is growing. This is this would be underground in the forest, whereas of course, the fruit like this reishi comes out of the wood in this case. And so it needs light to stimulate it, to tell it where to grow. You can grow these things in non-light conditions, 
So a typical example of that would be the button mushrooms and, and the classical mushrooms you buy in the shop. Traditionally, they were grown in catacombs and, and France, or they were grown in cellars and things like that. That's because they will fruit without light. But if you look at the, the portobello mushrooms or the kind of brown mushrooms that you see, they're the same mushrooms but exposed to light. So mushrooms really do need light to develop properly. And uh, some of them will really mess up if they don't have light. So that's the reason you have a kind of, in the fruiting chamber, you have a transparent lid and so you can get it to the right temperature and right humidity. Here would be like a smaller one and, and so on. Some people use mini greenhouses and they kind of control that. There's different ways to get humidity. Are you, some, a lot of people just spray with a, open this up and spray them with a kind of uh, sprayer, water sprayer. Some people use things like an ultrasonic um, mist generator to generate humidity and there's all kind of sophisticated systems out there well, that people have tried. And so, but that's essentially it. So in summary, you want to expand your Get your substrate colonized, colonized by the mycelium in jars or gusted spawn bags. Or you can even have like special kind of autoclavable pots and things like that. You stick them in a, a dark place in a box, get it to the right temperature, or, you know, or if your air encrypt is the right temperature, until this is fully colonized. Then you will transfer it to your fruiting chamber where you then introduce humidity, fresh air, a lot more fresh air and light and you take you typically take it out the bag at that point on these some of these you for something like oyster mushrooms this isn't oyster mushrooms but you can actually just take the lid off and then that increase of fresh air and the light will cause oyster mushrooms to come out the top so that's essentially it hopefully that will serve as a reasonable overview of the kind of things you'll need in order to grow the mushrooms what to grow them in okay thanks for listening hope that was useful